Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love every Saturday and Tuesday. And we're reading from Job chapter 5. God wants to comfort his people. We're living in some very difficult, hairy, crazy times. And God wants to let us know. He's got our backs, y'all. We're not in this thing all by ourselves. We have not been abandoned. All right. Now we're going to read starting at verse 1. Call now, if there be any that will answer thee, and to which of the saints will thou turn? For wrath killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. I have seen the foolish taken root, but suddenly I cursed his habitation. His children are far from safety, and they are crushed in the gate. Neither is there any to deliver them, whose harvest the hungry eateth up and taketh it even out of the thorns, and the robber swalloweth up their substance. Although affliction cometh not forth of the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground, yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause, which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth water upon the fields to set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. But he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. To the poor, so the poor hath hope, and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty, for he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth, and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace. And thou shalt visit thy habitation and shalt not sin. Thou shalt also, thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great and thine offspring is the grass of the field. Thou shalt come to thy, to thy grave in a full age like a shock of corn cometh in his season. Now, let me touch that real quick. Full age doesn't necessarily mean old age. It, it's another form of maturity. All right. Lo, this we have searched it. So it is. Hear it and know thou it for thy good. Now, listen, when we go back, let's go back to where he talked about they're taken in their own craftiness. You notice the Corona thing that went down. Who got hit by it the most? They created that sucker in a lab. And who got hit by it? Mm -hmm. The country that housed the lab that created that sickness. They got hit the hardest, didn't they? So what I want to share with you is no matter what is going on, no matter what happens, God is merciful and he is faithful to his people. There are some that may have been taken by that sickness, some that don't have faith for healing, some that have issues, whatever. Some that God may have just said, well, this is your time and I'm going to use this to take you home. But 
The Bible says, grave, where is thy sting? All right. Death, where is thy victory? Listen, God knows how to call his people home painlessly in total peace. I watched my father and my husband die and they died peacefully, you guys. They just drew their last breath and they were gone just like that. They didn't holler, scream and struggle and, and go through all kind of frantic gyrations. They went peacefully. God knows how to call his people home. He sends for them. He escorts them through that door into eternal glory with him. Now, for those of you who are here in the land of the living, who are still alive, know that God is not going to leave you. You notice he talked about no matter what goes on, we know famine is coming. We know there's a food shortage. We see the writing on the wall. It's all over the place. What God is trying to tell you is he's not going to let you go hungry. Now, you have to read God's word to check out the miracles God did with food provision. He fed his people with manna. He fed his prophet through a, an unclean bird, a raven, that went every day and brought that man quail to eat. He brought him food to eat, you guys. He brought him meat to sustain him. Now, the, those of you who are trying to figure out what's going on, this is a good time to fast and pray. A real good time for that. Because you need to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. And when you lay the things of the flesh aside, it livens up and fires up your spirit. And when your spirit gets fired up, so does the connection between you and God. It gets stronger. And the signals between the two of you eliminate a lot. The fast eliminates a lot of the static and the interference that hinders you from hearing God in the first place. So if you really want to hear what God's got to say, if you really want to get his, his mind on this situation, if you really want to know what God's going to do with you through it all, empty your, your belly and get your spirit full, full of what God has to say to you, full of God's presence. This is the time to draw close to God. Listen, some of you are fighting and battling depression. When I was praying for Peter, I felt like God had to work on his emotions, work on those insecurities. When I was praying for Marlene, I had that same type of feeling. Listen, God knows what you're feeling when you're smiling. He knows what's hurting in you when you're laughing. You're laughing out loud. You're crying in, in private. But God has every one of those private tears bottled up. Those invisible tears that you won't allow to fall down your cheek. God even has those bottled up. He knows what you're feeling. He knows what his people are going through. He knows that you're hurting. He knows that some of you are afraid and discouraged and you're on the verge of giving up. He knows that you, you, you're wondering why, Lord, when, Lord, what, Lord, what am I going to do? But he already told you he will feed you in famine. You will be sustained by your father, which art in heaven. He already told you he would protect you from the scourge. He will protect you from war. He will protect you no matter what comes on this country, no matter what happens in this world. You are hidden in the secret place of the Most High God. He has got you covered. Mm. If you could only understand the love of God, if you could only understand when God shares his covenant, he is not a, 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 a psych God. Psych, that was only a joke. No, God ain't playing. He'll play, but he ain't playing when it comes to his word. He's not going to go back. Let, let God be true 
and every man a liar, but God ain't the liar. He is not man that he should lie. So you have to understand God's love. You have to read his word to remind yourself of how mindful he is. I got to say this, Peter, right now in the name of Jesus, I feel like God is saying to you that you are his son, that he loves you. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. Do not be disappointed in yourself. God is working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure, and he will complete the thing that he has begun in the name of Jesus. Be encouraged in the Lord. He's got you, Peter. He's got you. You're not slipping away. You're not losing the grip because God's grip is strong and eternal. Don't lose heart, Peter. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what kind of thoughts are going through your mind or what kind of demonic attacks, but don't give up and don't let go. In the name of Jesus, don't let go. Father, I ask you, Lord, help me hear from you, Father. In the name of Jesus, help me hear from you. Okay. Back to the word. Thank you, Lord. So you have to know that God's heart bleeds for you. God knows what you're going through. Oh, my goodness. God knows what it's going to take to get you from point A to point B. I had a picture last night when I was getting ready for the word. So you can picture what God is doing with you, each and every one of his people. Picture yourself with an arm around your waist, holding you really, really tight. And while he's got you in his grip and he's protecting you, in his hole. He's fussing at the people that he's getting ready to judge. He's angry. He is ticked off. He is so full of wrath right now. He has had it up to there and he's done. But while he's bringing judgment, while he's punishing, while he's going through a season of exposure and pulling people's underwear up in front of the whole world to see their dirt, and making them pay a penalty for it, finally, God's got you wrapped in his arms tight, pressed close to him. It's as if he can speak and fight and do whatever he, and glare and send fire, whatever he's doing, but he's got you held tight in his arm. Picture that. You're looking up at your daddy as he's seething, he's boiling, he's, 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 Oh my goodness, he's crazy with anger, but his love has got you held tight and he's not going to let you fall out of his hands. His love is there with you while his anger is aimed at them. That's what we're going through, you guys. We're not going to be the brunt end of his anger. <sighs> the, the Lord has given me the scripture right now. Some of you are going through a lot of weeping. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And when God brings your morning, baby, it's going to be worth it all. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in him. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in him. That's what we're learning now, you guys. We're learning to trust in Jesus. We're learning to trust in our Father in heaven. We're learning to lean on the everlasting arms of God. Because there are times we feel very weak. There are times it even hits us physically and we just feel exhausted. We feel beaten down and wiped out. We feel like a wet dish rag. No matter how weak, how tired, how run down you feel 
through your emotions, your thought processes, the demonic attacks, the onslaughts of the enemy, 5G, whatever's going on out there. God's got you. When you are weak, God is strong. It ain't on you to be strong. It's on you to lean. That's all you got to do is lean, baby. Lean with all your might. Lean. Put all your weight on God. Casting all your care on him, for he careth for you. Don't fear. Don't be dismayed. He giveth rain upon the earth and set his waters upon the fields. He sets up on high those that be low that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. Mm, 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 mm. You know, when we go through darkness, the word says God sheds his light. When we don't know what to do, God knows how to be a traffic cop. He knows how to direct traffic in our lives to get us in our ignorance from point A to point B. He knows how to get us to the divine destination. He knows. But I want to tell you this. When you deal with those, the powers that be, and the rich, and the Illuminati, and the elite, and all those that run things that are sending this, this world right down the toilet, that are flushing it down the toilet. Let me tell you this, you guys. God's got a payday. Now, we don't celebrate their payday because vengeance is God's, not ours. Judgment is for God, not for us. But God does have a payday. And when judgment starts flooding this country like it's already begun, trust me when I say God's got his arm around you while he's taking food from them, while he's diminishing their position, while he's lowering their egos and shaming them publicly and humiliating them and stripping them bare and exposing their filth. He's using his holy love to feed you. He's using his holy love to caress you, to comfort you, to gird you up to strengthen you on the inner man, to give you vision in the night. You see plainly because God is shedding light on your pathway. He is taking good care of you. Do not fear. Do not panic. He knows how to render you immune to the corona to anything else they want to throw out there. He knows how to render his people immune. He knows how to make us invisible when the enemy comes in this country like a flood and they start snatching people. God knows how to make our houses look dark when the light's still on. He knows how to give us power when all the power's out. He knows how to do all kind of stuff. Put water in our faucets when the water's off. He knows how to cleanse the water. God knows how to do whatever he's got to do to take care of his people. What you've got to pray for and fast for is the faith to believe for the impossible. Because the more you believe the impossible, the more impossible God will do, the more miracles you will see in your life and in your brothers and sisters in Christ. And we will celebrate what God is doing while others are mourning the wrath of God. It's like two roads going side by side, parallel. And in one road, the Lord showed me this years ago in a prophetic word. One road is wide and full of people and it's full of, of trauma. It's full of chaos. It's, it's full of agony. It's full of death. It's full of sickness. It's full of disease. It's full of pestilence. It's full of violence. It's full of hate. It's full of fear. Everything's going on on that road. But that little small narrow road where God's people are, it's full of peace. It's even. The pathway is smooth. It goes straight. There are not a bunch of hilly things going on. It's not a bunch of 
potholes in the, in the street. No, no bombs going off. People are walking safely. They're walking in the noonday. Even at night, their road is well lit. They don't have to wonder. They're well taken care of. The food is on that road. Provision is on that road. Power is on that road. Authority is on that road. And the beasts that try to attack the people on that road can't touch them because they use the name of Jesus and bind them suckers and they disappear and the animals can't find them. The demons can't touch them. We are divinely protected. God is powerful, y'all. He ain't no whip. He's not a little baby in a, in a, in a manger. He's powerful. And we have to ask God to help us trust him. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in him. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. You read that word, you pray without ceasing, you fast, and you live as holy as you possibly can, even when nobody's looking, you do your best. God bless you. We're going to be all right, y'all. It ain't going to be long. Amen.